how have you noticed the flip of you putting your work persona above your personal persona and now why has it flipped what are the changes yeah well i read this quote and it was like you have to learn to love the parts of yourself that nobody claps for mm. and i think that so i need to cop <clears throat> i think that when you're doing a job that it is part like it's entertainment um you're a personality you are in essence being you're being paid to be yourself um it's easy to start to kind of say okay what's me like and, and what is taylor rooks right like what who what are the differences and so I just wanted to make those two things be more of the same, if that makes sense. And I realized sort of that, like that they were. There was this, um, I went to the GQ Global Creativity Awards and I'm going to take a sip of water Please. because I'm literally about yeah, to no, die. Sip of water, <laughs> you're, yeah. Enjoy yourself. <clears throat> I was like trying to power through it. <laughs> was like, we're on no one's not. time. The real Taylor Rooks takes drinks of water. <laughs> okay i think we're back sweet okay oh so i went to the gq global creativity awards and at the awards uh hoi yan was getting uh an award from squid games that the main actress from that show and she's talking about just her journey in the business, what she's learned about herself, the road she's gone down. And she says, there would be mornings that I would wake up and I would ask myself, am I enough? And then there would be mornings that I would wake up and ask myself, am I too much? She goes, but I realized that what I should be asking myself every morning is, am I myself? Mm. And when she said that i re like i genuinely thought i was going to cry because it resonated with me so much like it is it has actually been a true battle and process to get to the point where you know what is most important above all else paramount above all else is that you're stepping into every day as you because it is a losing game if you are trying to please everyone or if you're trying to be too much, not enough, all these things. There will always be someone or something that is not in complete like tandem and unity with you, but that doesn't matter if you are in step with you. But I know what it's like for people to not understand. I know what it's like to just simply be existing and people have things to say you know i know what it's like to feel like your voice is being taken away because people are so focused and consumed with other things about you and that is something that i have struggled with um a lot but in the past i would say maybe three years when i've really felt like i've come into my own everything opened up for me because i knew that the key to success in all things, life, career, whatever, was that I was me because that was going to be the thing that brought everything else. So I just, I just really, really connected with that in so many ways because I knew exactly what she meant. And it is a really hard life mentally. And it's a hard place to put yourself in mentally when you are caring about whether you're too much or whether you're enough. And when somebody dislikes you for just being yourself, that's difficult too. So you have to learn how to untie people's opinions of you from who you are. And so I feel like I, I am there now, but I wasn't always there. And I think knowing that and recognizing that was why I wanted to continue to be more just in tune with myself. <clears throat> yeah, I was listening to previous interviews you did ranging from 2017, 2018 to present day. And you said often, 
I, I get all these comments online and I don't really care about them, but I kind of do was the, the feeling I got from it. You were, you were playing it off like it didn't matter, but I knew or could feel, I sensed at least, that it did matter to you deeply and it still mattered as you were saying it in that moment. How do you stand today with internet comments and, and internet culture because I've seen the ways in which you've treated them in the past and I'm curious where your current stance on it is today. Yeah, I mean, so, and something that I always say and mean it with my, my mm -hmm. whole heart is I owe a lot of my career to the internet. I think that the internet can be a great place, right? I am thankful for every person who has ever watched a clip, commented on a clip, retweet, all the things. So I understand the great things about the internet and I have benefited from many of, the, of those great things about the internet. When I first started, I cared very deeply about the internet. I thought what they said was gospel. I thought that every comment you needed to take in, they thought that opinions were a thing that mattered when I first started. I would say I didn't fully start to say this is silly and I don't care until probably a year and a half, two years ago. Like it was, ve it, it was gradual. I went from caring so much about it to caring a lot about it to caring about it to not caring but still wanting to look <laughs> to not caring and not looking but that was like a whole process right so that would i can confidently say that's where i am now and a lot of that is because there are just like there's things that are so not true at all that you're like why would you care yeah. about this? You know what I mean? Like, this is so ridiculous. Why would I care? Um, so it's that. But then it's also like, I want, like, there are only certain people that I would want to like the work that I do. You understand what I'm saying? So if there's people that are, incredibly immature, right? That don't understand nuance, that are focused on the fact that I'm a woman, that are maybe focused on my appearance, whatever, and they have something to say. Why would that matter to me? So that's just kind of where I'm at now. I'm not paid by the internet. I'm not paid by comments, right? I I'm paid for the work that I do. So if the right people care about what I'm doing, then that's what matters to me. I think that getting caught up in opinions again uh is a very losing game but that is not to not say like the internet does have to be better right like people say things on there that they shouldn't um and of course that burden and onus isn't on me to not care but i think there should also just be conversations about why are people this way on <laughs> online um but I would say, yeah, I'm in a I'm in a much better space with it within that. Well, it's like your career skyrocketed so quickly that it it when it when it's a slow climb, I feel it's sometimes easier to navigate through it because you could say, all right, I'm getting this level of comments. Then it's like, oh, I'm getting a layer higher. But from my perspective, it seems like you just went straight to the top in the sense of okay, you were doing some stuff in college, but then like you graduate and then it's just like, you're, you're on the moon. And then there's a lot of comments. Yeah. And so you think about like a, a 22, 23, 24, 25 year old person. It's like to have all of those comments about their appearance looks and to not even fully know themselves at that place is like a very difficult thing to deal with. And it's really, yeah. it's really, it makes me feel great to hear how that evolution has gone for you and how much more at peace you seem today versus when you've spoke about it previously. Yeah. No, for sure. And like, to your point, like my life just moved very quickly, mm -hmm. not in the, not necessarily even in terms of like, Oh, you know, one day I was working and no one knew within one day it was, I was a national talent. I don't even mean like that. I just mean that 
things happen for me quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, like even when I was when I was in college, I was, you know, interning and working and covering Illinois football and basketball. But so much so, like when I was in college, I was I was breaking news. Like when I was at college and I would go to basketball games or football games, people would want to take pics. And I'm like a I'm like 19, 20 years old and I'm like still figuring things out and learning what that is. So that's how it me when I'm in college. And then I graduate college and I 21 years old doing a live show on the Big Ten Network, which is a network you begin any home and I and I am doing that. And then I leave Big Ten Network and I move to New York City and I work at SNY and I'm covering sports in the number one market in the world. And I do that for some time and I start this podcast and that gets success. And then I go and I work with Feature Report and Turner when I was like, I think 25, I want to say I started, 25 or 26, I started working with, with BR and Turner. I had my own show where I was interviewing people. And so I never had really a break of these years without the mm -hmm. job. And I think if you get to have that time without the job and just with yourself, you do get those moments to know who you are better. So I'm learning who I am through what people are telling me I am and experiences that I'm going through. And that's a different kind of like that, that's just a different kind of journey and you have to separate, okay, who are you and who am I being told that I am and what are the commonalities between those things and, and what are the differences? And I am more than just the person that is, you know, going on air and talking to the athletes. And I am more than the person that just, you know, gets dolled up to go behind the anger desk. Like you are so many things separately from the thing that you do. But when you're in your 20s and you're doing it at a very high level for that age, it's really hard to get, I mean, it's really easy to get those things mixed up. Um, so yeah, that's why just, it, well, I think it will be life that you're learning about yourself. But I don't want to say like I was robbed of the film. It's robbed it has a negative con connotation. That's not what I mean. But it was certainly taken because of the career that I decided to partake in. And never before in human history have people been accessed to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of comments about themselves ever. And if yeah, you were, if sure. you were getting that many comments, it was people telling you to your face with empathy and concern yeah. and care. And that's one of the things. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I feel as if the comments really do hit you at such a deep level or had in the past is because you are such an empathetic person and you do care so much. And so when you inherently care about yeah. other people, you are going to look at other people commenting things and being like, I really yeah. value what you say and I really care and I'm empathetic yeah. to what you, but learning to separate that is like, this person has no skin in the game is really important. And it seems like you've done that well. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, like, just on a, a, a base level, it's kind of if we're being real, I look at the comments and I'm like, I have built this for myself. And I know that I'm very good. And I know that whether or not you see that doesn't affect me and pay. It's not going to affect who I get on my show. It's not going to affect what I've built. So above all else, that's that's what I tell myself. I am very proud of the space that I occupy and who I have become in spite of all the things. And so I know with literally full certainty that no comment stops that. So then why would I care about the comment? Like when it really comes down to it, that's why I'm now fine with it. And there probably is, you know, some correlation between feeling like you're solid in your career and not caring about comments. I, I'm sure there's there's maybe something there that I haven't like fully tapped into, but knowing that and knowing who I am and, and knowing that it's solid, who cares what the internet has to say? It has genuinely no effects on just like 
my position. Yeah. You've built it. 